so you co-wrote the screenplay and you also co-directed the film. How does that collaboration work, especially when it comes to, to co-directors? Like, what if somebody like says, no, I don't want to do it that way, and you go, yeah, I want to do it that way? <laughs> well, we, we usually come to set as directors. We've worked things out before we get to set. So we've talked through the shots and what we're, how we're going to approach different scenes for the week. Um, and I would say, if either of us have a super strong feeling about something, the other one will get, give. I mean, I, we don't usually have opposite incredibly strong feelings. One of us might say, I would like to shoot it this way, but the other one says, no, I really, 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 I think that's sort of the, the we didn't make a contract for this, but this is how it has worked out. Yeah, I mean, we, do, it's, you know, it, we get asked that question a lot. I think there's a lot of curiosity about how co-directors work, how we're married, that's another issue. Um, <laughs> the, um, but, you know, we really have a unified vision almost always, and it's, you know, as you've got, you know, if I was in my 20s and I wanted to do something, I wouldn't back down and I'd dig my heels in and later I'd say, why was I fighting about that? I didn't even make sense to me what I was fighting for. But now I could, you know, I can hear, we kind of go in both ways, which is if I say something that makes no sense, Maya says, that makes no sense, and I could say, oh yeah, you're right, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> And it forces you to articulate the, your reason for why you want to yes. shoot a scene in right. a certain way, um, which is really helpful because that obviously that that is something that will affect the entire everyone. Everyone, you'll be able to articulate that for everyone, which is really important. Um, so it's yeah. It's I also good. say it's, it's a, a good very, friction. It's a it's a you know the filmmaking is collaborative. Right. You are just endlessly getting ideas from every different department, and so we see ourselves as part of that big entity that you know moves together. So so where did you make this movie? How did you find this place? How do I get there? <laughs> I, I just want to like move there right now. <laughs> so we ended up uh, so we so the movie uh, takes place in Massachusetts um, but we shot it in Nova Scotia um, and we had I mean Nova Scotia is very very pretty but it was this little town called Chester in Nova Scotia that I guess has a lot of people from New England. It was, it, it was challenging because I'm, I'm from Massachusetts and um, to get it to look really like um, Marblehead or one of the, one of the North Shore towns um, was, it, there's not a lot of the same architecture or anything in, up in Nova Scotia, but uh, Chester was settled by people from New England who had vacation houses there. And so uh, we were able to cobbled together a New England <laughs> feeling. Uh, and it was beautiful. I mean, we saw it from September to, to into November, which is a beautiful time of year. Um, we were very happy that to be shooting in the fall. It seemed like the right season for this film. Um, and yeah. So you shot it from uh, uh, September into November of 2020? No, of, oh. of 19. Oh, lucky! So this <laughs> this movie has a beard longer than mine. It's so oh. old. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Th that must have been a relief <laughs> that you got it done before all that. Yes. yes. Um, but also, Marina Baccarin is also wonderful in the film. You know, a role that we don't really get to see her. Yeah. Uh, you know, do very often, and her dynamic with with Sigourney obviously is, is extremely different, obviously from Kevin's. But they're they also are terrific together. And Sigourney um, was really, she was very clear on what what she wa was looking f for with Rebecca, which was, you know, just this warmth and an escape from the sort of rigidity of the community, the New England community that Hildy lives in. So someone from outside who brought just, an, just a more free, a, a freer feeling. And she needed, uh, you know, she was really, she was, very cognizant of the fact that she needed a friend, a new friend f from outside the world that she'd been in. And Marina just felt, just brought that energy to it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was, and they, and they had a great time together. They also, yeah. I mean, the nice thing about Sigourney also as being the sort of, at the top of your, of, of, of your cast, she, she's, she brings a wonderful energy and expectation that everyone is going to be there to, you know, work hard together and not, get, you know, not cause a lot of problems with each other. I mean, she just brought a really professional but warm vibe to the whole set. You know, with all the films that you've directed together, but especially the films that you've written together, what were the unique writing challenges and what were the unique directing challenges for The Good House? 
Well, I mean, certainly the voice for writing the script, the voice was so important to us, and so to really be able to capture that voice. And we're thinking a lot also about our mothers and what they have experienced, and so it, we wanted to make it, you know, a tribute to these women who work really hard and feel like they get left behind in some ways. So that was, I think, the number one challenge for us as writers. Uh, but I think, uh, but and, and then there's a lot of great lines in the book. We wanted to be able to uh, bring those into the movie and again, I think when we when we we start started out sort of like there was a lot of voiceover in the movie. I mean, it was most it was tons of voiceover. It was all the st all the stuff to camera in the beginning. It was voiceover, um, and then we realized. Th n I mean, it will be a much more interesting dynamic for her to actually be speaking to the audience like their like the friend. So I I'd say that click mm -hmm. that and and Sigourney had not done that before. And in the beginning, she was like, "This is so strange." But by the end, she was always like, "Where's my friend?" This is like, you know, the camera. She wants to find the camera and tell the camera what what's really going on. You know, so she really got into it, got into it. Um, but I would say that as a writer, that was the hardest. And then, anytime you're doing a book, you're trying to be faithful to the book, but you have to compress so much and cut so much stuff out of the book. Uh, so it's always that's always a bit of a challenge. Yeah, one one of the other things that I really felt made the film really authentic and genuine is, uh, and and ha having Hildy break that fourth wall. She's talking to you like, like you're you're in the room. You're part of the crowd here. So, and you brought up like you get yeah, I you know I have a drink, and I'm good, you know. But the person you're with has another, and they're they're good. And then they have the third. And there's a line in the film. I'm paraphrasing like, oh, it's that third drink, and your personality changes. But through that, and as if the progression gets worse. You still are on Hildy's side. You're rooting for her. So what, what were the challenges for Sigourney to keep you on her side? Like, what was the prep that she did to really nail that side of her character? I mean, I, I you know, that's kind of a tricky question because, you know, she's, I, I, I can't speak for what she's doing. I mean, I could see, I could see what she's doing, which is that she comes to rehearsal very prepared and ready, not rigid, but with very set ideas about what, about this character. And she does what I think all actors should do, which is, whatever the part, fall in love with this character and yeah. really embody it. So th that kind of answers, it for, that's as best as I think I could answer that specific question. I think she just tried, and she just tried to play it really authentically f as a person who believed that he'll, uh, who was on, as as Hildy, thinking that Hildy doesn't have a problem, <laughs> and that was so important um, cause she, to bring that denial to the her performance. Um, yeah. Well, you know, we don't think about, we, you know, we get asked the tone question a lot, and, you know, I think 30 years ago, this was not like, what this, what's the tone of Terms of Endearment? You just went and saw it, and you went like, hmm, that's a really interesting movie that has funny parts and dramatic parts, or... Kramer versus Kramer or Ordinary People. These were just very normal movies that kind of have disappeared f from the American landscape. Yeah. Yeah. So for for us, we don't, we every every scene is its own moment. And this scene could be funny. It makes sense for it to be funny. This is more dramatic. We play for the, we go for the drama. You know, we, it's not, it, it, we just kind of look at each individual moment and try and capture that moment. And I do try to, I mean, I think we do we try not to worry too much about I mean, we'll, obviously, we want the audience to be on Hildy's side, but sort of trusting that you, we all know. I mean, one of the reasons we decided to break the fourth wall was we thought everybody knows Sigourney Weaver. You know, we all know Sigourney Weaver. So when she turns and talks to us, that's going to have impact. Um, uh, and so that was very important. And I think we sort of just trusted that if she was talking to us, she's funny and and she can be, you know, Hildy certainly can be brusque and cold sometimes and Yankee, uh, but people will like her, you know, and will want her. And she, you know, anyway, we'd sort of trusted that people would be on her side. You, you brought up Kramer versus Kramer. You brought up Terms of Endearment. This movie definitely has that feel, uh, and it's a lost art. We haven't had a movie that felt like those films in a long, long, long time. You also brought up The Lost Weekend. And at the same time you were talking about that, I was thinking of Days of Wine and Roses. Uh, a little more recently, Robert Zemeckis' The Flight uh, with Denzel Washington. You know, movies that really like lean heavily into it. 
but again, because, because of the progression that so many of us experience where we're like, oh, they just like to have fun. Oh, maybe they like to drink a little too much in them. No, they got a problem. Um, it just felt much more genuine that way. So what was the, what's the takeaway that you hope people get from the film and what kind of reactions did you get from people who went like, yeah, I've, I've experienced that? Well, I mean, just what you're describing, really, we've certainly over the last however many months it's been around, um, a lot of people have come up to us at different times to say, I've had this very similar experience, this is my story, this kind of thing. And, you know, we're not trying to make a PSA, we're trying to make it some <laughs> entertainment, we want it to be good and entertaining, but we also want it to be about something. So, um, you know, and I, again, I credit the book for really setting the template for us. Well, I want to thank everyone for being here for today's screening of The Good House. Thank you, Maya. Thank you, Wally. And enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you so much.